our planning committee members are so excited by the enthusiasm that we received throughout the community for coming up with the conference with the largest, the longest title ever. <laughs> Welcome to Responding to Resurgent HIV STI Incidents Among MSM in Connecticut, Effective HIV Prevention Interventions for Gay Men. I will be your master of ceremonies, time diva, Oprah, all of those different things, whatever you want to call me for the day. You know, I started doing this work in 1996 when I worked in Ohio at AIDS Volunteers of Cincinnati as their first gay youth educator. I'm shocked that we're here today talking about some of the same things that we were talking about in 1996. But today is an opportunity for us to come together as an HIV AIDS community to make a difference. Today is the chance to have a call to action, to have an impact on what is happening in the HIV AIDS community, specifically with regard to increases among men who have sex with men, and particularly young gay and bisexual men of color. I'm so excited that we have this partnership between the Department of Public Health, CIRA, and CARC. It's been an incredible journey. I want to acknowledge the planning committee members, Gina D'Angelo from DPH, Chris Andresen from DPH, Roberto Cruz, who's an intern, formerly an intern at DPH, Lee Evans from CIRA, Wilson Palacios from CIRA, Lisa Eaton from CIRA, Sean Lang from CARC, who unfortunately cannot be here today because she's at another research summit uh, up in Toronto. Leave anybody else out from that committee? I think so. So CIRA is involved in this because we really believe in the importance of taking scientific findings and getting those findings out into community practice. The committee has been very thoughtful in how we put together the agenda today, where you will hear from some of the science around what's happening in the community. You'll hear the science behind some effective behavioral interventions. And then you'll hear how those interventions are actually being implemented successfully by some of our partners uh, in our neighboring state. I want to briefly mention uh, a project that we have at CIRA called the Community Research Partnership Program. This is a partnership between a CIRA affiliated scientist and a community partnering agency. There are several programs that are funded um, throughout the state. Some of you are very familiar with the program. Uh, one recently that got started is with the Hartford Gay and Lesbian Health Collective and the Institute for Community Research and the Connecticut Trans Advocacy Coalition and CHAIN that is working to understand the needs of trans the transgender population in Hartford and to sort of enumerate that category. Another one is with AIDS Project New Haven in which Ted White, an associate research scientist at the Yale School of Public Health, is working with Chris Cole and his team from APNH to actually go out into gay bars in New Haven and do testing around HIV and sexually transmitted infections to try to identify people that are unaware of their status and link them with care. That project is going to be starting this summer, hopefully. It's my pleasure to introduce the section chief for the Department of Public Health, AIDS and Chronic Diseases Division, Chris Andresen. Um, thank you, Leif, and good morning, everybody. And on behalf of the Department of Public Health, I just want to thank all of you for showing up for this. And I, I think, you know, initially we really estimated, but like, oh, how many people are going to come? Maybe 75, 80, you know, something like that. And to have 200 people to show up and talk about HIV prevention for gay men and other MSM, and I'll probably just say gay men just to stay within Leif's time frames here. Um, but, to, you know, to have 
you know, about 200 people show up to kind of talk about and focus on HIV prevention in Connecticut um, related to gay men is just, it's just a wonderful thing. And um, I'm so glad that you're all here today and really hope that this is a start. Not a start, I mean, because we've already started. There's stuff happening, but we really want to see more and we need to do more. And that's what the data is telling us. Um, you know, and thank you, Lee, for thanking all the planning committee. I was going to do all that stuff too, but um, but he already did it, so I'm not going to I'm not going to continue. Um, you know, one of the main reasons for this conference, of course, is the continuing rate of HIV infection among MSM that we're seeing in Connecticut and nationally too, and also um, the the rate of syphilis in Connecticut. You know, I started. Um, I started working at the Department of Public Health in 1990, and I worked in the STD program investigating syphilis cases. And you know, as a young gay man, and I was doing partner notification for HIV and syphilis cases and stuff. And as a young gay man getting into the HIV prevention field, I was really hoping to work with um, you know gay men at high risk for HIV. And when it came to syphilis, we really didn't see um, HIV cases among MSM, and you know that was a good thing. Um, so to see it now completely flip-flop the other way. I mean, all the cases, we had tons of cases, and it was all basically heterosexual related to drug use, a lot of crack use and stuff like that. And to see it completely reverse, where basically none of the cases are, you know, there's no heterosexual cases, basically. They're all basically MSM cases, and about a third of those cases are HIV positive. You know, it's really scary, and it really kind of is a call to action for us to do something. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to talk about too, and kind of was asked to talk about, is the name of this conference. And I see we've, you know, we've got this really nice, long, very sort of dry name um, to the conference today. But it, but it's very, it's it's safe, and it and it, you know, I don't know if I saw this originally, if I how excited I would have been about this conference. Um, but with this conference name change, this conference name change that we had, you know, the original name, um, you know, actually part of this conference too. You know, really what it, what it came from is the fact that a lot of providers, and I had sort of anecdotal conversations with people about, you know, so why isn't your agency, you know, why aren't you still doing stuff with gay men? You know, what happened? It kind of fell off the, the radar. And a lot of people would say, well, you know, we're just not sure what to do. You know, we're, we're not sure how we'd address it. It's, things are different today. It's the internet, and we're not sure how to connect with that. And, you know, at the same time, you know, kind of case managers were seeing, you know, more MSM showing up and continuing to show up. But people on the prevention side, it was like, we're just not sure what to do, you know. And people are almost, in a sense, afraid to um, apply for funding for MSM, and you know, because we didn't know what we were going to do with it. So, you know, me, I wasn't as involved in the, the conference planning as Gina D'Angelo was, but she kind of would come back and fill me in, and I'd see the emails and stuff like that. And one day she came back and she was like, she's like, well, they're working on titles, and she's like, they're talking about them, and some of them are a little sexually explicit, you know? And I was like, oh, no. I said, no, no, no. I said, if we are involved in this, we are not going to have a crazy sexually explicit title, all right? I said, if they want to do that, they can go ahead. I was like, but we're not putting DPH's name on that because I just don't want to go there right now. I was still an acting section chief too, you know? So, you know, so, so I kind of just, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, what are they thinking? What are the names? You know, I was creating all these ones and I'm not going to say them out loud, what, what, what it might have been. Um, so, so finally I get this thing and it's like, here's the title, gay men, um, what was it? What can you do with them? Yeah. Do with them? Gay men, what can we do with them? And I thought, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's it? Okay. You know, and I, and, and in my gut I said, this is exactly, this is exactly what people are saying. This is what the providers are saying. What do we do? You know what I mean? And on the one hand, there's sort of the kitschy, what do you do with them? You know, but on the other hand, there was a sort of like deep kind of like, what do we do with them? You know, what do we do? And it's out of concern and love, you know? And I know that there were some people that were offended by that title and it hurt me to the core. Um, I understand, I understand what you were saying, but it was really very, you know, deep hurt because, you know, this evolved from a group of gay men and very gay friendly people with true concern and love for the gay community in Connecticut and, um, you know, really wanted to push the agenda on that. So, for one, I apologize to anyone who was offended for the original title of the conference and thank you for the feedback that you gave us, but two, I want to assure you that we never intended to you know, to some of the things that people were saying, well, you know what, put them on an island, put them here, put them there. 
it was never there. I hear what you're saying, but that was not the case. So, um, you know, I just we just really wanted to make that clear, and we're very sorry for anybody that that was offended by the original title. But it truly, truly did um, come from the true sentiments in our little HIV prevention world that we were hearing. You know, and I think once it got shout out to the broader community that aren't necessarily involved in HIV prevention every day, you know, sort of that. What are you going to do with them? What the hell does that mean? You know, that, that kind of reaction. We were like, oh, man, okay, now we see. But, but that really wasn't our intention. But we did listen, and we did change the title to this. And, you know, I also wonder if we would have had such a great turnout if we didn't start with that title that got everybody talking about it, you know. So, so we flip-flopped on the title, but so glad in some ways that we did start with that one to see such a reaction and get people actually talking again about HIV prevention with MSM. So... Um, so that's, I think my five minutes are up, but I think Leaf took more than five minutes anyways. But um, I'm going to turn it over now to, you know, it feels like old, you know, old times here in some ways. You know, about in 1989, I was finishing up at UConn and, you know, I don't know, I was like 22 or something like that. And I went to AIDS Project Hartford to do my internship. And um, there were two people working there. Um, one was Patty Ruat, who was the executive director at the time. And the other one was John Murs, And he was the assistant director. And um, he was my supervisor for my little internship, you know. And one thing he asked me to do one day when I went in there, he brought me to this room that I had. And he's like, oh, here's all these papers. Um, I'd like you to um, just collate these. So I was like, okay. And I'm like, what the hell does collate mean? <laughs> you know, today I do know what it means, but I felt so stupid, you know, and I remember it to this day. Um, but it's my pleasure to introduce um, John Mers. He's the executive director of the Connecticut AIDS Resource Raids Resource Coalition, where Sean Lang works, and you know they do amazing work. And you know Sean Lang's work is really, I think, um, you know, and Clark's work is really a huge reason why we've been able to maintain our funding for HIV/AIDS in Connecticut. You know, and I really just thank them for the for the efforts that they do to keep funding going for all the services that they that they provide related to housing and other things in Connecticut. And please help me welcome John Mers. Well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Some of you obviously don't know me. Good morning. Good morning. That's more like it. Um, yes, I am John Murs. I'm the director of the Connecticut AIDS Resource Coalition. You never see me out because Sean Lang and I uh, arm wrestle to see who gets to go to these exciting events. And she's stronger than I am. And um, she always wins. If she were here, she would say... You need to stay involved and get involved in the AIDS Life campaign. It's only because of your voices and you're going to the Capitol and you're speaking to your legislators that we did not incur such large cuts as other social service uh, agencies and um, fields. So please join CARC. It's very important that we're able to show legislators the, the long list of our members. Become involved in AIDS Life Campaign, participate in our events, um, and we'll be able to stay funded. Um, so I'm doing commercials this morning. That's my role. You'll see on the um, dais is a AIDS chair. It is a visual representation that we need to stay involved. We need to re-engage those who have um, fallen away. We have um, information both in English and in Spanish. What's really exciting about this chair is that it came from a group who got together, um, Chris Cole from AIDS Project New Haven, pulled a group together and said, we've got to do something, we've got to do something. And out of it, from the collective energy of the group, came the AIDS chair. Daryl Decker is in the room um, from Concerned Citizens for Humanity. He made sure that they were produced. These can be rented up to, I think, what do we have, over 100 of these for your events. AIDS Project New Haven, uh, CARC. We have a couple chairs. If you just want one to symbolize it at an event, we can arrange to get that um, to you. So please uh, use that. It's important that we get together and that we collaborate and that there's synergy. So I'm very excited to be one of the co-sponsors of today. And it's great to see all of you. It's like old home week. So um, we're going to send Sean out of the country more often so I can get to see you all. <laughs>